welcome to the Manic Pixie Dream Vlog. I'm where I sit and I talk about my life and um, I think that's, it's kind of sums it up. It's all it is. I'm sitting in here and just talking about shit that I think. And um, I, and then people watch it and it's kind of fascinating to me. I don't know why I'm just starting to think about it like, like that. It's odd. It's an odd thing to do. I guess if you think about it that way it's um like new technology is like crazy you know what i mean how people interact with each other like in these new ways they're so new these are only a few years old barely i mean like i just couldn't imagine doing this 10 years ago i couldn't imagine like being a little girl and thinking this is something i would be doing it's crazy to me um like i don't know like i <laughs> A friend of mine, she got sexually harassed, not sexually, she got sexually assaulted on the street. And I just, I don't know why, she has like this, okay, she, she has this beautiful body, she has this beautiful big butt, and it's like just beautiful, perfect and round, and it just like, and she just can't hide it in anything. It just, she, so she was like, I, it's always leggings. It's always when you're wearing leggings. Leggings, like guys love fucking leggings. I don't know why. It is just like I get I get sexually harassed, and sexual like not sexually harassed, but I get bothered like when I'm when I go to the grocery store and stuff. Like I get um I mean sometimes it's kind of harassment. It feels like harassment for sure when guys get really aggressive, um you know and catcalling you. It can feel really um it can feel like harassment for sure, and it probably is. It probably counts as harassment. Um, but, um, I don't know if a guy like tells you to smile or something like that, like f fucking, okay. It's like, like, I mean, I, like that what you want really? I mean, it's like, okay, like I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, fine. It's worth a smile. Somebody's going to take the time to tell me what to do. I might as well just, I don't know. It's not the hill I'm going to die on, I guess. So just, I don't know. Um, but yeah, she was, um, so she, like this guy on a bird, one of those little like scooters, those motor scooters I have in LA now, like he came and he like roundhouse, like just like slapped her butt while she's walking down the street. And I don't know, I just thought like, that's so crazy. Like that guy, and he just like <laughs> motored off. I don't know, it's like, she had a sense of humor about it. It was pretty funny, but, um, <laughs> but it's like new technology. And how we, like, like even how we abuse people is, like, changing because of new technology. It's, that, it's like, I don't know. I My favorite movie right now is Blade Runner 2049. And there's that, and if you've seen it, then Joy is, like, this um, AI character. She um, is a computer program that can be your girlfriend or something. And, um, and... Uh, Ryan Gosling's character, the main character, he, um, he really loved her, like, really, like, he had this, like, very, like, sweet love for her, and, um, you know, and then, like, when the, the whole tragedy and the whole heartbreak of that movie was that she wasn't real, she was this fake thing, and, um, and she didn't really love him, and he didn't really have anything or anybody in his life, and it's just, and it's devastating when he realizes that, and, um, it's a great movie, I really recommend it, uh, <laughs> It's, um, but, uh, anyways, I, I wonder if that's like with like, like sex robots coming out. Like they're not sex robots. These like, there are like videos I've seen where it's like the guys that have, I like, actually have relationships with these dolls, like an actual full blown relationship with a doll where they'll talk to her and it's like this imaginary friend <laughs> and, um, you know, and it's just like, I don't know why, but I relate to those dolls and I relate to, to Joy and, or that character, the AI character, the computer program in 2049 so much because I don't know. I just like what kind of, I mean, I think every woman and every, I mean, there are guys I've projected my fantasies onto for sure. I mean, I've been in enough toxic relationships that like you can really lie to yourself about somebody and make somebody, somebody they're not. And, um, and, oh God. I don't know. You shouldn't do that. I I wonder with new technology, it's becoming more, 
um, people are becoming computer programs themselves. Like people are becoming like a, an app of themselves. Um, <clears throat> and who they are is just like what they're, like how you would design an app is how people are designing their personalities and their personas. And I don't know, and that's kind of what the like, zeitgeist is, I guess. Like their apps and media and how the media is now and how uh, just this, what I'm doing now, is just, it's, it's a spirit, it's a soul, it's its own unique thing that's never existed before. And it's a, I mean, Maybe it has, because I, you know, I read the Bible sometimes, or I, I, or if you read an old book, um, they all, it's all the same shit, it's all the same kind of, everyone has all the same kind of problems, you can still relate to them. And the situations relate to the situations that they have now, and, um, I, once in school, this um, somebody or a teacher said something that really um, stuck with me: that every story, there's no original story. Every story has already been told years ago, and um, every plot in any movie can always be um, tra traced back to Norse mythology, the Bible, or Greek mythology. And um, <clears throat> and so it's just it's those mythologies. That's all the stories that have ever been told. There's no new story. And I mean, I, I mean, what a cliche am I, you know, like there's, I mean, I am like, I'm a, I'm a trope. I'm an, I, I'm, I, I have named this podcast after a trope that I in fact am and have lived my life as. And it's, uh, it's just crazy to me. I mean, the manic pixie dream girl, she only existed to serve men but like with her, with like more with just like her body, she wasn't a fembot. She had like a personality and sort of a, uh, a, a you know quirks and ticks that were that made her remarkable. But that she didn't have a soul. Those characters didn't have those women in those those stories didn't really were were soulless. Um, I. At work last night there's this girl who um, she's pretty young and she's really sweet she's just um, she's and she's beautiful and I know she escorts and that just it, it breaks my heart that she does that because she's so beautiful that she could be a model she could make a living being a model and I just I don't know like I just tell her like you should just try and get an agent try and get it attached to an agency just do something with that you just you're too beautiful to just be escorting and stripping and but she's just like no I'm good I'm fine I'm happy with my choices and um and I just know how many times I've had those conversations with other people and and it's just I, I'm being such a hypocrite telling her this, this girl how to change her life when I'm not doing the same thing. Well, actually, no, that's not true. And I'm trying to, my therapist is telling me to give me myself more credit for the shit that I'm doing. I am doing things with my life outside of the club. And, um, and I don't know, sometimes I feel like a hamster spinning my wheels and just, and I don't know, doing shit that, and this is, this is all pointless. But, um, I don't know. Technology, it's cool that it's going to be something that can open doors for so many people. I mean, once holograms become a thing, we wouldn't even need teachers. We would have, you know, brilliant professors and computer programs personalized to teach students. I mean, you hear about, like, stuff like that. <clears throat> I mean... Technology is an amazing, wonderful thing, but it's just like at the same time, it's it's not in a lot of ways, and it's separating people, and it's like it's making people isolate, and it's bringing so much depression, and so much um, just disconnection from the outside world.
but I gosh I just I think about that girl and I just um I worry about her so much I just I worry about her and I just like I she's just sort of my favorite person there and um and I don't know I it's not something you want to get stuck in for sure and I just I, I see it and she already is she's already in it she's already in the game and she's not getting out and she doesn't want to get out and and it kind of breaks my heart a little bit it's easier to love other people than it is to love yourself and for some people and I guess with, I mean, even the Bible, it says love your, well, love others as you love yourself. That kind of goes the other way around. Love yourself as much as you love others. And I know I struggle with misandry a lot. I, I, um, I struggle with hating men and, um, and with having, um, and it's like, I, I feel like, I mean, how I feel towards men sometimes it's like, this is how a racist feels. This is how um, a bigot feels. This is how people who hate gay people feel. This is how I feel about men sometimes, is, is how, um, is very, it's, it's hatred. It's just, I have hate in me for half the planet. <laughs> and, um, and that's, oh God, what that does to you is not good. It's just a dark place. It's just, it's not a good way to deal with your problems. And it's a very, it's a very easy way to deal with your problems. It's, it's like a, it's a break because you stop having to look at what's going on with you and, and feel and, and that going to a place of blame just is comforting in a way. It's crazy. But hatred of all kinds is just, it's not good. It's not going to help people. It's not going to heal the world. It's not going to help women. And I don't know, I believe in second chances. When I think about um, a friend of mine, we were talking about Louis CK and just kind of how he's having a comeback and how he's coming back. And it looks like, yeah, Louis CK is definitely coming back. And, um, and I mean, I've been debating that for a while, just kind of what I've experienced with sexual assault and stuff and, um, and just kind of putting myself in the shoes of those women and how uncomfortable it would be having somebody just be like, oh, can I masturbate in front of you? Like, and then how fast and how, um, you know, and I read the, the testimonies of, of his victims and stuff, and it's, it just seems like it just happened really fast. They were confused they, that it was an, inappro an inappropriate question to ask in the first place, and he was going, um, you know, he approached these women assuming that they would say yes. And, um, and also, I mean, God, he lied, and he said that they were all just rumors. And if he really wasn't like it was in a place where he was just it was just a misunderstanding and he was confused or maybe he was dealing with some sex addiction issues, which I mean going into sex addiction, I mean like I I mean you can't you can't be like a meth addict and not eventually hurt somebody. You're hurting your family, you're hurting your friends, you're hurting your, yourself. But like, it's the same thing. Like you can't be a sex addict and expect to go the rest of your life being a sex addict and not hurting people. And so when you look at sex addiction and rape, I mean, they go together very well, I think. And I mean, I don't want to blame a disease like a mental illness for, you know, what happened to me because that feels minimizing, but I don't know. Um, I, I I mean, it has to be an element of it, and it has to be acknowledged, I guess. And just, I mean, it doesn't. I mean, and I feel like porn would only heighten sex addiction and stuff. So that's just like another thing that I think that like porn isn't good. But I mean, at the same time, I do watch it sometimes, and maybe it's hypocritical to like just tell people not to watch porn or when I do the same thing. And I'm just, I don't know. Like I just. I wish I was, I had the energy, the emotional energy to be better, more of a do-gooder and to be, and to stand up for, um, for women more than I do. Um, because I think, 
Um, or at least, you know, monitoring what kind of porn. I, I really think people should do that. You know, like, I mean, just monitor what you're watching. Just know what you're watching is ethically made. You know, if you do that with clothes, the world gets better. If you do that with food, the world gets better. You know, if you do that with porn, then the, the, then the world does get better because the people who are working in those industries have a better experience. And if they have a better experience, then when it comes time to leave, they're not as emotionally handicapped for what you have to go through from like a porn shoot, which I can't imagine. Like that would, I mean, it sounds like a nightmare to me, honestly. Like that sounds like my worst nightmare going off, like being in a porn shoot, being in a porno. That sounds horrible. And, um, which I don't know. I mean, does that surprise people? I sometimes I, I say things like, I mean, honestly, like I, I'm proud of my, like I, it's a weird thing. Like I'm proud of how few people I've slept with compared to how many I, people would assume that I have. And I mean, it's, my number is, it's not that high. I mean, compared to other women my age, it's really not that high. It's, I mean, and I, um, and I, I'm like, I don't know why, but it's just like, why, why does it matter? Like, why does it matter how few or how many you've, people you've slept with? And, ugh, I mean, and I bet any guy who's watching this and hears that question probably has the answer in his head and it's probably horrible. And, um, but they can't say it out loud or say how they really feel about it because they'll be condemned. And, but it's like, it, it, I don't know. I just sometimes behind the closed doors of any person, you really start seeing who people really are. And when people start talking about race, when people start talking about how they feel about women or how they feel about men or how they feel about the Republicans or how they feel about Democrats, I mean, it's really awful. People really hate each other. People really have a lot of hatred towards other people. That's not good. That's really bad. That's not going to help anybody. It's not helping the situation at all. The people, everybody's at war. And I don't know, maybe being at war with yourself is the best war you can really fight and that's the one I'm fighting right now. And I try not to worry about other people. Everybody's at where they're at. You know, I... But... Yeah. I do think about what other people say. And sometimes it really affects me and sometimes it doesn't. But I try and think about why they're saying it, and I try and think about what it means that they're saying it, what it means to me, what it means to them, where they're at in life, and where I am at in life. And then that brings me a lot of peace, you know, and the, the resentment I would feel towards that person kind of dissipates, and I feel a lot better. But... I think hating other people is hating yourself and I think loving other people is loving yourself and but God sometimes people really make me angry and I really hate people I really it's I mean it's kind of especially men and fake feminists I feminism for a long time really meant a lot to me and I thought feminism for a really long time, feminism was gonna, was the savior of the world. And it was gonna be, it was, feminism was Jesus Christ, was as, and <clears throat> feminism was gonna make my life better. And it was gonna make every woman's life better. And it was gonna make men's life better. And it was just the, gonna be this whole new world. And, but it's not because women hate other women and feminists, I feel like a lot of them really just want to look good. And feminism is the new bridge club. You just have to be in the bridge club, you know. It's, um, it's just what's in. It's just what's new. And it's just what's modern. Because... But it was the same way in the 60s, and it was the same way in the 70s, and it was the same way in the 80s, and the same way in the 90s. And feminism has always been kind of a cool thing, you know, has always been sort of a, a modern new invention that people take pride in, in investing in. And, um, 
but nothing really seems to change that much for women, at least how they're relating to each other. And then nothing really seems to change with men, at least how the men are relating to women. But it's like the this like idea of change hovering over us gives us comfort through it when it gets bad. Or when things, you know, like the Me Too movement. I mean, that went bad. That, went, that things got really bad. That was a really, like, that was a stressful time. I mean, that was, I mean, I was stressed out going, like, reading all the articles. Like, I mean, like, seeing all the comments, like, seeing all the debates and stuff. It was like, a, it was like, I mean, the presidential election, I got depressed. I, 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 I mean... I think Hillary Clinton was a horrible candidate and I think Donald Trump was a horrible candidate and just and 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 I think Democrats are guilty of horrible things and I think Republicans are guilty of horrible things and I just I already have to I don't it's just an evil I don't want to participate in because there's no right answers. There's really just no right answers. There's, there's pros and cons to every single thing. And I don't know. Um, a friend of mine was getting an abortion and under the circumstances that she was choosing to get an abortion, I thought it was wrong. Um, she was engaged in um, and not in any financial trouble. And um, so when she made that choice, I wasn't okay with it. And I was upset that she was making that choice. <clears throat> and, um, and, uh, um, and we're no longer friends. And, um, because she was angry with me for being upset with her choice and not being approving of her making that choice. And, um, and so I was supposed to stay with her until her aunt came. And then when her aunt came, she wanted me and her aunt to go with her. And she asked me to stay. And, and well, the reason why she was asking me to stay with her is because she wanted somebody there afterwards. And, um, and there's more details to this story, but that sort of sums it up. And I, it was just, it was, I don't know why, but there's something, there was something very sinister about it that just um, really um, freaked me out um, and I didn't handle it well. And, but at the same time, there are, there are circumstances where, I mean, I, I, I would never think less of a woman for having an abortion. Um, there are most circumstances I would just, I would never think less of her for having an abortion. But I don't know, I guess, is there, I mean, is there exceptions? Was that the exception? Was a woman who had money and had a man choosing to have an abortion? Is, I mean, do we just have to be okay with the choice of having an abortion no matter what it is? No matter what the circumstances are? And... But I think there are a lot of feminists that would not approve of me saying that or would not understand me in, in my saying what I just said about it and or would think that I was in the wrong for not being there for her. And I, so I mean, sometimes I'm just, I'm not as feminist as the them as, as, as feminists would want me to be and so I because there's so many feminists who wouldn't even consider me a feminist just because of that situation alone I don't ever call myself a feminist and then I get judged for not calling myself a feminist and or yeah I don't know well that was a lot to go over um I hope <laughs> those uh yeah just um the gym is closed in my building today and I usually spend today working out and um and but it's closed so I just decided to do a vlog instead so thank you for watching 
and um, please like and subscribe if you like what I have to say about things. Um, please support my channel. Thank you very much. Bye.